Today we're going to the beautiful town of Port Douglas in far north Queensland and we're going into the studio of an amazing abstract artist, Jacqueline Jusen. Jacqueline is inspired by nature and likes to express human emotions through her work. She's had a long career as an artist with many years working as a ceramicist and has also had a career as a sculptor. Now she focuses mainly on abstract paintings. Her stunning work is created by building layer upon layer until she achieves her desired result. Today we have the privilege of going into her studio as she takes us through the process of developing one of her beautiful artworks. Welcome, Sophia. Hi. Welcome to my gallery. Oh, how lovely to be here. Come in. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Jacqueline's gorgeous home is like her personal gallery, displaying an array of her talents, including her ceramics, jewellery, sculptures and her paintings. She will often have an open house for collectors to come and view her work and you can arrange a time by contacting her via her website. Jacqueline and her husband Craig have created a beautiful atmosphere with stunning gardens that adorned with her sculptures and has an open plan that extends out into the beautiful pool area. So this is also one of my things I did when I was um, a ceramicist. Wow, look at that. So that's, 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 that's you. Me. That's me. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yes, it's a headstand now. <laughs> it's a part of the whole body and I just used the top bit. Uh, but my whole body was on display in, in Melbourne, in the Telstra building, in an exhibition. That was quite hilarious. And uh, very bold of you, I must <laughs> yeah. say, too. Yes, yes. But um, we're going to go into Jacqueline's studio now and uh, watch her create one of these fabulous paintings and learn a lot more about her amazing life. Okay. So, let's show we All get right, into the studio. Okay, let's go. So I started painting with trying to create a lots of layers. So I just start randomly Wow, look at that. paint on. Oh my goodness, that looks like fun. <laughs> and then... Randomly. Yep. So what's that? Is that like a big trowel you've got there? Yeah, I think it's, I don't know, something that... Um, looks like... Plaster is used, I think. But I, I like the way you can move around with it and then I use some thick gesso a lot of it gets um, gets covered up again later on in the piece and then when I work in layers I use paper thin paper and make marks so what sort of paper is that? This is it's called wet rings tissue paper. You can find it on um, Amazon, I think. And then because I'm working in in series, I relate this painting with that painting. So I use this to relate that painting with um, that painting, and then. I have sometimes a lot more smaller paintings and I'll just, for instance, don't like this bit, I start covering up things. So your work has this beautiful texture in it. Uh, created by using lots of collage work, like for instance, this one I, I just printed off, I might use that again with another colour and, and then use this paper later on to cut uh, to cut it in pieces and stick it on. So where do we go next? Well we, we might just try another colour. I'll just scoop it up or pour it on. Not fussy because at this stage it's just playing around. 
So create texture. It is a bit like clay, just fr from my days as a ceramicist. And bringing up being a so, ceramicist, you have only just quite recently started painting. Yes, when in, in 2020, when the COVID started, because I have arthritis in my fingers now to do something that was a bit more gentle on my fingers. So I enrolled into a course of Nicholas Wilton in America and I haven't looked back since. He really inspired me to keep on concentrating on painting and the rest is history. Oh my goodness, what you have been able to achieve in a short period of time is astounding really. And you've had a solo exhibition. Yes, last year I had 79 paintings in the show. <laughs> so I've been busy, but I was during COVID in the studio every day and that's how I kept saying, I think, yeah, because it was a very troubling time. So I'll, I'll just try to do a bit of a print here. So see, the, the whole texture changes. Yes. It, it, it will go through a very ugly stage. So I'll put some on here. Or relayed back again. It's really good for collectors who want a couple of pieces in their home. I had a client who bought five paintings because it all related to each other because they could see snippets of the one painting in the other painting so it sort of all came together in the same space. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I just want to do some drips. Ooh. It's looking very childish now. It's See, but now we're creating some drips and I'll, I'll, I'll get that same colour all over the place somewhere. So A little bit here and a little bit there. Yeah. And, and those drips look quite fantastic, but they may or may not stay there. They may or may not stay there, or they might be just long, one little tiny bit like a window come out with the drips. But that's... We'll see what the end result will be, whether the drips stay or not. I just end up covering things up I don't like and that's how my my subconscious mind comes to fruition, I suppose. And so you're really just guided by your intuition? Yes, yes, yes. And it all depends on the day how I feel. So you so, don't consider yourself a very neat painter? No, I'm <laughs> as messy as can be. Where the floor is covered in paint. Uh, I quite like it, the floor to be like that, because you have to be in it, you know, you can't be pretentious. You can also, that is what I learned from Nicholas Wilton, you just you think you get nice shapes like that. And just gives it a slightly different texture as well. Yeah. So Nicholas Wilson, uh, you were mentioning, is a, a workshop you went to. Yeah, it was online for three months, it was a very... Um, intensive course but it was um, I really really liked it because he set you tasks and learned about the principles and about color and it was very simple it was very easy to understand and it was very good to put into practice yeah so that was really good and as you were mentioning before you've actually been a ceramicist and you've done jewellery. I've started uh, my own pottery studio. I would supply galleries and um, restaurants sometimes with pots. It was very hard work, but I, I enjoyed it. And I was making pots on the wheel. That's what I got my arthritis from, I think, and from kneading all the clay. So I started doing sculptures, large ceramic sculptures, and then in the end, big concrete sculptures. And you were actually very successful with your ceramics as well, weren't you? Yes, I won several of awards. I quite enjoyed it. We moved to the city. I didn't have a big large studio anymore, so I had to think of something else to um, do. So I went back to school to become, do small sculpture. Uh, in jewellery. At this stage I would stop and ha have it to dry 
and then I'll put a layer, an, I, I call it an isolating layer on top of that and when that's dry I, I, I just start layering again to the same degree. I might put some bits of this on or I might um, see this is a really nice thing to make a print off see so this bit I can use to use at a, at a, you know and another bit of the painting See, I've got the blue in here now. Yeah, beautiful. So it, it just creates another la layer, see? Your jewellery, they're like uh, sculptures or pieces of art in themselves. Yeah, I'm not very good in making just normal jewellery. I'm more into sculptural stuff. I won a few awards, but it was fairly short-lived because my hands started to lock up my fingers the same problem again that's about when um, COVID started so I desperately was looking for something else to do because I thought oh boy what I'm gonna do and that's when I started painting so you're obviously highly creative throughout your life I cannot not create <laughs> I need to um, make things while you were doing your ceramics, you were telling me about a fabulous place where you were living in Hillsville. I lived in a sustainable community in Hillsville, right on top of Mount Tulbevong. And I met my husband there. We didn't have electricity. I was still doing my pots then. I had my studio there and we um, had to put a generator on for my wheel to work. And we lived there for almost 30 years. And then we moved to Fitzroy in the city. That's where I started to do uh, the jewellery. And from there we moved to Port Douglas. And you've got this beautiful home here in Port Douglas. It's really like a, a gallery in itself. Yeah, it is a gallery in itself. I get um, visitors up, um, tourists who come and visit me and um, they always buy something. You've actually produced a book with your paintings in it as well. Yeah, there's a book about my exhibition called Resilience. It's really showing how you can come out of dark times like COVID. You know, it's a realization of what you have to do when COVID started and it is, you contemplate it and you adapt to it. So that's what the book and the exhibition was about. And your work really has a lot of messages behind it. I realised when I start painting that what I'm thinking about, like when the fires were starting and I ended up making paintings that related to the bushfires. When the war in U Ukraine started, I made paintings that I thought, Ah, oh, that's that about. Beforehand, I don't know that I'm making them. It just appears because it comes out of my subconscious mind. <laughs> yes. Yes, so what I have done here, this is now collage papers. You let it dry, you might cut pieces out of it, what you like, and use it later on the same painting or on another painting, whatever it suits. And then, but this has to dry. Then I put an isolation coat on it. It's like a varnish, satin matte uh, layer. And when that's dry, I can start the process again. So you're going to show us another uh, method that you use to yep. um, create some more texture. Yeah. So let's leave this one here where it's at and we'll go and have a look at this other technique. Okay, good.
So I'm just going to demonstrate a quick demonstration um, how to use a gel plate. People can make it themselves but you can buy it on the internet, it's, it's called gel plate. You can make monoprints of it and those monoprints I use a lot in my work. Like I have a full box I prepared earlier. One that you prepared <laughs> earlier there? Yes. So what's in, what's in that box? Well there's all those prints I make while I'm doing the painting and there's um, prints are done on the jelly plate. So I'll put this away for now and show you how I sort of, you only need a little bit of paint and then you go on with the roller. And what sort of roller is that? That looks like it's quite, it's not a spongy one is it? Like no, a... it's a rubber one. So if you uh, google jelly plate printing um, it will say what tools you need and this is one of the tools that's a rubber roller. So now this probably is a little bit not enough but you, you have to make sure that you're not overdoing it so, so equally or, or you can leave it blotchy like that that has a good effect as well and then or you can make some marks, marks on it or a piece of string that's quite effective. It's fascinating watching your work Jacqueline because you've got you're, you've got such an incredibly creative mind, but you came from a, a, a big family yeah. and you had a big family yourself, but yes. there's a lot of uh, creatives in your family too. Yes, I got it from my mother. She, I um, have four brothers, four sisters, all my brothers can knit, <laughs> some of them can sew, and see, see what you can get. Wow. So I like can use this, I can cut it up a bit smaller and then I can put it, stick it on a painting, paste. Okay. And then I can put it on here. It's this is just some paste. So you use a roller to put it on. See, and then it sort of disappears. Wow. In the canvas oh. because it's very thin. How do you name? your work and, and is that a very important part for you? It is important because once I finish a painting it gives me a feeling and that feeling reminds me of something. When I for instance did the fire paintings I really felt like I had painted the bushfires. A lot of people think that abstract art is really just splashing a bit of paint around but Today we've actually seen the amount of thought and the process that goes into it. Well, it is really splashing paint around, but you can you 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 do it unco It's like a meditation. You do it unconsciously. You just put marks out, which are you. You might make certain marks. Somebody else might makes different marks, and then you just be. You play like a kid, that's the beauty of it. And then after a couple of layers, you start to be a bit more precise. You're gonna look at the composition and the color combinations. You might need some more light in there. And that's how you develop by doing it every day. It, it's very important to practice. If you wanna be a serious artist, you have to practice every day and evolve and change and try different things and really be aware what lights you up. What is it that you really like? And you do more of that. Great advice to pass on, <laughs> great yes. advice. Yeah. Yes, and it's really good for your mental health too. You know, you can, you really like in a different world when you're doing it. And you've just recently come back from the Affordable Art Fair. Yes, yes. I decided I'm going to, this year I was going to really uh, concentrate on marketing because it's all good and well making paintings and having fun with it. My husband says you have to sell it because otherwise where are we going to store it and people would want to look at your paintings. So that's how I ended up at Affordable Art Fair. Lots of people said on my solo show the year before, 
you have to go to Melbourne because your art will do really well there. And they were right because I sold quite a considerable amount of paintings. So it was very exhilarating to do, but exhausting because I rather just paint <laughs> yes. and be in the, in the studio. But it was great to interact with people. A lot of artists don't really particularly want to do the business side but it's so important. It is important to do that because marketing, if you don't market your work no one will see it so it's important to be able to um, be prepared so you have to catalogue your work from the very first of the beginning. You have to um, make sure that you got it all written down what you have, number your work. So once you start marketing that you know where it is in your computer and send it to a gallery. Make sure that you do some research in, in how you uh, size your photographs and stuff like that. Get some expert advice to do that because it will be worthwhile in the end that you good prepared and good organised. So if you want to see more of my work I have a website that's all part of marking. Website, Instagram, Facebook. My website is JacquelineJoson.com. There's lots of work in there. You've also got a exhibition going on at the moment in Port Douglas with some other artists up here. We've got a group exhibition going for Port Douglas artists at the moment, so I'm dying to show you. Okay, great. And let's go down to the gallery. Yeah, okay, good. We headed into town to see the group exhibition called Exposed, which is organised by Port Douglas Artists Incorporated, a collective of artists specialising in a wide range of mediums. Port Douglas has a thriving arts community and there are about 25 local artists included in the show. Some of the remarkable talents included are Tim Ellis, Jill Chisholm, Tanya Heaven and the renowned fashion and textile artist Linda Jackson to name just a few. You can keep up to date with more projects by searching for Port Douglas Artists on social media platforms. Okay, well Jacqueline, what a beautiful day it has been with you. Thank and you. it must be a lovely experience to come together with other artists. And it's so lovely to be in this space. Yes, it's been great. Mm, yeah, well, I had my solo show here last year in this same building filled with all my paintings but it's great to share it now with all other artists and, and um, see it all coming together. And as I said Jacqueline has produced so much work <laughs> and it's because you love it. Yes. It's something you do daily. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in the studio every day. Mm. So if you want to go and see more of Jacqueline's work go to her website which is JacquelineJoson.com Well thank you again and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye! Bye! Bye. <laughs>